She's done it to me again. I'm professional. Did I tell you I couldn't stand Kai? Robin Hobb, y'all. Let's talk about it. If we're sitting by the brick, we're talking about Robin Hobb. Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. So glad you could be here. Here we go. I've told you, no one should be surprised. I need to talk about Robin Hobb. Ship of magic. So, for those of you who don't know, I am going through my journey of the realm of the elderlings, um, which is, I think is a five, three, or four trilogies, one for a text. I think that's, I think that's it. I don't know, it's a lot of books. It's 16 books. I just wanna get on here and just express my feelings they are all over the place. I will link some more coherent reviews that help me process my emotion and my feelings and all of it. <laughs> I talked about Robin Hobb and the Farseer trilogy starring <laughs> who gave me fits. Anyway, we're not talking about that. that was my first introduction to Robin Hobb and her beautiful writing and the genius of her craft and all of the the ways that she can leave a heart speech, my heart in particular. I said I am committed, I am wholly invested, and I'm going to go continue The Realm of the Elderly. Ship of Magic is the first book in the second trilogy of The Realm of the Elderlings. This is a complete 180 from the Farseer trilogy. The Farseer trilogy was told through the first person of Fitz, and you met multiple characters, and it was generally like centralized around one location remember maps you know maps and all of that so that 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 rule still does apply so be be careful there's maps in this one too so here it's it's blowing out but but th th this is a map of the cursed shores this is a spoiler for reviews the ship of magic is about a precious commodity called wizard wood and there are the live ship traders who have an agreement with some of the rain wild families along the cursed shore and after three generations of a trader family have passed on on this particular boat the boat or the ship excuse me the ship becomes a live ship it becomes sentient the story opens up with the viscerate family if i'm saying these words wrong y'all should already know your girl this is fantasy so i mean if the words don't make sense i mean hey like i said hey <laughs> i'll link some other videos you know that that can say the words correctly so it opens up with althea and she believes that she is supposed to be the captain of the live ship however her inheritance is stolen from her and given to her brother-in-law kyle We'll talk about that in a minute. I'm not trying to get my blood pressure up again. So the story t goes from there. That is the main central story. But what makes Ship of Magic different from the Farseer um, trilogy is that it's told in third person. There are multiple um, characters. I mean, we follow, we follow a, a, a pirate. We follow some animals that are like serpent, water serpents, and follow Althea and the entire Viscerid family dynamic. So Althea, her sister, her brother-in-law Kyle, her nieces and nephews. So it's a complete cue the family drama. Mm. The family drama, honey. <laughs> when we know we here for it, but we act like we not. It's on a whole nother level. It follows so many different things and the world is so expansive. One thing that stood out to me about Ship of Magic and compare, well, differently from Farseer was like the setting of the six duchies was so cold and wintry and very like kind of nostalgic that you would think of like fantasy Viking-esque kind of thing like stews and soups and furs and snow and you know that kind of um uh atmosphere but a ship of magic we're in a warmer climate there um we're we're traveling down different channels and port we're seeing different ports and different types of cultures and people and and different you know this is the world is just completely opened up and so whereas with farseer it was very centralized to fit and specifically we were in his head but with ship of magic 
we're in the third person and we're just all over the place all over this beautiful mysterious alluring world and i need to know about these rain wild folk and this curse shore yeah what kind of bargain did y'all make i need to know but rob mahom she ain't gonna tell you everything if you are curious to read the life ship trader you could skip the farseer trilogy i don't recommend it i think that the Farseer trilogy is a great place to start to really get into the realm of elderlings but you know if you're not really into the first person and all of that I think Life Ship Trader is a great entry point it's completely 180 nothing is spoiled from Farseer you just jump in and you're like what who are these people what are we doing and before you know it you're here so my experience reading this was just absolutely amazing and while I'm high, I'm it's just a master of subtlety and emotional intrigue and the the characterization and how she was just able to the the character depth of all of these of all of these characters i mean we're talking about at least seven characters at a minimum that we're following and whether they have a lot of page time or not you are invested in the characters whether you hate them or you love them you're curious about how their decisions are going to impact the plot and so that's what i really love about hobbits the characters and their motivations and their emotions and their perceptions actually drive the plot of the story and you don't know which way it's going to go it could go two three four five different ways and it's not complex in that regard like it's not a complex decisions but you're like the the implications of those decisions is what makes the complexity and the spontaneity of reading robin hobb and every time i opened the book and i read it i was just swept away i forgot what i i mean it didn't matter it was nothing to sit and read 100 pages the book is close to i think it's about almost 900 pages it's about 880 pages i was here for every part of it and then before you know it things are happening characters are moving plot points are, i mean it's just ah, Kim, she's done it to me again so y'all already know i've already started mad ship and i don't know what i'm going to do i i had my little list of books i planned on reading but child I'm a professional. I told the book to do that. Another thing I enjoyed about reading um, Ship of Magic was the lore and learning about this other part of the world and what it all means. I have more questions. The story was just so intriguing and so alluring and mysterious. And then you add on the characterization of all of these different characters who, it was like they were so real. They like, you walking in on a conversation that they're having with someone. That's how intimate the writing is and how beautiful Rob's writing is. And, you know, it is slower paced. It's not boring, but it is slower paced. So if, you know, reading slower paced books or, you know, really sitting with characters and just enjoying being a part of a story, you know, if you're just trying to get to the magic and getting your questions answered and you know you're really want to pace pace here we go here we go robin hobb may not be the author for you but if you just want to go in and have no expectations and just go along on this journey i mean she will give you my tbr about to be in the trash whatever i planned on reading i ain't gonna read i'm gonna be reading robin hobb i gave this book five stars who was surprised i was a little concerned that everyone you know it's like no life ship trader is gonna be even better than farseer and i just couldn't believe it but y'all was right robin hobb really took it to a whole nother level with this even though she's writing in the third person it doesn't feel like it everything is so flushed out beautiful and heart-wrenching i mean there's so many characters that i love but let me tell you about the characters i didn't love there's a character if you know you know there's a character who i absolutely love i can't stand kyle if your name kyle i ain't mad at you i mad at robin hobbs kyle i can't stand i loathed him oh couldn't stand <laughs> he was but a guy and i couldn't stand him on the page did i tell you i couldn't stand kyle he was about to get a whole whopper if i could a double whopper okay <laughs> double whopper another character in it that i just feel like she need to get a whooping because she i malta if you know you know girl little girl little girl you about to 
you little girl. There again, she's a little girl. And when you are at that age where you feel like you know everything and you don't know Jack and you're, and the adults around you are like, girl, I just, you know, it's like, I just wanted to backhand a couple of characters in this book. I understand. And that's what, that's what the character complexity that Hob can write in her stories is just absolutely phenomenal because you understand his reasons or characters reasons for what they do but how they go about it is so trash and it just invokes all of these emotions from you and I would be just like Aah! and then I would feel like oh my god how how was this happening no it was just so <sighs> the things. Hob is about to take it up a notch and I'm gonna be in here not ready for none of it but ready for it but satisfied about the experience and still having questions and wondering why but then understanding why I don't get the answer however angry about some characters I mean she just and it's so subtle before you know it you're like invested and I but I loved it Robin Hobb just gonna have your emotions all over the place and she don't even care because she know you're gonna pick up the next book lastly I'm still blown away at the fact that this was written in first published in 1998 oh, and it still has such depth and longevity and presence come on I don't normally have a favorite author I have favorite books but Robin Hobb be one of my favorite my favorite authors you know, I love stories, but to know how an author tells a story, to be invested in how an author tells their stories, it's just a completely different tier. And I'm here for it. I wish I can sit down and have a, I have a cup of tea with Robin Hobb and try not to vent on her, cause it ain't her fault. It's the character. You know, she ain't had nothing to do with it. It was the characters. You know, it's all the characters. She had nothing to do with it. But just to get my my feelings. <laughs> Do you plan on reading Ship of Magic? Have you read the Farseer trilogy and you were like, just dive in and enjoy the experience. If it's something that you are interested in, I encourage you to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. While I just randomly talk about, she indeed is the queen of fantasy. Don't worry, I'll be back.